All right. So, um, so financial innovation. Uh, what made subprime, which had always been something that was a very limited thing, what made that suddenly so attractive? And the answer was financial innovation, uh, a way of packaging it. Um, the question was, how can you, um, you know, who's going to invest in securitized mortgages that consist of all of these slightly flaky um, subprime loans? Uh, and the way that they dealt with that was the collateralized debt obligations. Um, so there's a, uh, um, you would take a basket of subprime mortgages and sell um, contingent claims on different pieces of the income stream. So people are paying their mortgage payments and you would have the, these different ba pieces, tranches, by the way, the uh, um, slice. Uh, the, but the term is, uh, that people always use in the financial stuff is tranches. So you'd have a, <clears throat> a first tranche that would um, have first dibs on any income coming out of the mortgages. And then there'd be a second tranche which would get money only if you were getting full payments up to the amount contracted for the first tranche. And then a, sec a third tranche and so on, sometimes up to, to, uh, to 16 tranches. Um, and the theory was that even if a lot of these loans went bust, um, there would still be enough money coming in to, to fill the, uh, the, the first tranche. So that, that even though the, the underlying mortgages were kind of flaky, uh, through this you know, um, uh, engineering, financial engineering, you would have created something that was a, a pretty safe asset. Uh, and the other stuff people would buy because they were willing to take on risk. They, they would be offered high rates of return if, if nothing went wrong and then, you know, uh, accepting that it might not go wrong. But that the, the primary, the, the top tranche would be a, a really safe asset. And so, and, and the rating agencies agreed. So Moody's and Standard and & Poor's and Fitch were willing to classify the top tranches of these things as, uh, as AAA rated debt. And so it was a way to, to uh, you could then get respectable investors, institutional investors, uh, uh, funds that were holding the money for the Florida school teachers and so on to invest in these things. Um, <clears throat> okay. So what happened? Um, by the way, there's a, uh, uh, there's a memo uh, that was circulating on Wall Street which had a uh, describing a proposal for a new kind of collateralized debt obligation. And it became a collateralized overlapping... Uh, at, 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 I probably shouldn't be doing this. It's going to go on YouTube, right? Uh, uh, anyway, the, the, the acronym turned out to be colostomy bags, uh, which, would be, um, which would be filled with structured high-interest transactions. Um, and... Uh, um, the... Um, okay. Here's what actually... <laughs> Here's what actually happens. Um, the, the real problem, part of the problem, actually there's been, a, there's been a lot of misemphasis in this. People have been talking about, well, these were loans made to people who should not have gotten loans, um, which is arguable. <coughs> but what turns out to be really the problem is not that. And there's actually some research now from the Federal Reserve of Boston showing this. What really happened was that this became, the, this whole process became a way of giving people a lot of um, lending to buy houses with little or no money down right at the peak of a housing bubble. Um, and it's not just new home buyers, by the way. A lot of subprime lending would involve people refinancing. People who already owned a home refinancing to take out a mortgage that then came much closer to the, to the actual value of the home. And, uh, and then, um, and that in turn would... Um, uh, you know, the, it would be, to, to borrow up to that much, they'd end up going subprime. But so it ended up that, that it was mostly a way of getting, you know, lots and lots of, um, of debt. Uh, there's also appears to have been a quite substantial amount of uh, uh, essentially predatory lending. Uh, people, they, as um, uh, Ned Gramlich, Federal Reserve governor, uh, who died uh, just a few months ago, but he, he uh, wrote an anguished essay um, saying that you know, the most complex loans, the most uh, difficult to understand, are actually being made to the least sophisticated borrowers. Uh, lower income people, often uh, immigrants, uh, were, were getting complex loans that had low teaser rates that suddenly shot up and uh, complex terms, and they, they were, so there were probably a lot of people who were being steered into products that were really just very bad for them. But, 
<coughs> in any case, the, the whole effect was to, uh, to get a lot of people borrowing up to the hilt and borrowing up to the value of their homes, just at a point when home prices were way out of line with any normal concept of fundamentals. Um, and then the bubble burst. And um, so you take, um, <coughs> right now we've had a, uh, depending on which measure you use, but either a slight decline or uh, a 5% decline. There are some data problems. There are two different widely used indices, and they're not telling quite the same story. But anyway, home prices are certainly on their way down. Uh, and you have large numbers of people who borrowed uh, 95 or even 100% of the value of their home and bought it at peak prices. Um, and the result is that you have a rapidly growing number of people who are, have negative equity, have home mortgages that are worth more than the house. Um, this is bad. Uh, in, first of all, it, it means that in uh, non-recourse states, which is a good part of the country, uh, a non-recourse state is where if, uh, if you simply walk away from your house and the mortgage, end of story. They can't, the, the, uh, the mortgage holder can't come after you f uh, further. That varies very much across states. But in a non-recourse state, if you, have a, uh, if you have a house that with a mortgage, if you have a $300,000 mortgage and a $200,000 house and you can't see any prospect at any time in the, in the foreseeable future, the house will be worth more than $300,000. There's a strong incentive to just walk away. Um, or uh, even if you are... Uh, <coughs> If that's not the situation, if you're, having a, if you're in financial difficulty for whatever reason, uh, you lost a job, you're having your, um, uh, you've had medical bills, I could give my, my, my sermon about universal health care, that's a different topic. Um, you have, um, you have uh, your, your teaser rate has just gone up and, and you really haven't thought about how you would pay the higher rate. Um, if house, house prices are rising, you can resell the house. Um, and you know, just uh, escape gracefully, or you may be able to refinance and get yourself a, a, a breathing space. But if house prices are falling and you have negative equity, you can't do any of that. So um, the, the uh, Boston Fed found that basically the rate at which home prices are rising or falling is the prime determinant of whether you have lots of foreclosures or not. Uh, and if you have a lot of borrowing that is, has put people at the point where they start to have ne negative equity if home prices start to come down a little bit, uh, then you have lots and lots of foreclosures, lots and lots of mortgages not being paid. And, uh, and foreclosing leads to big losses, not just because the house isn't worth the value of the mortgage, but also because the process itself. Uh, you end up having to sell the houses. The, 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 uh, the, the company that takes possession never, usually sells them at, at fire sale prices. Um, and how big is this? <clears throat> foreclosure rates are already at, at unprecedented levels, uh, but if you do a f back, if you do some calculations, it gets really terrifying. So I actually had that in this in morning's times. Um, if you, we have some data on what, how many people had how much home equity uh, in uh, at the end of, of 2006, and we can you can figure out from that if home prices decline by X percent how many people will have negative equity, which puts them at high risk of foreclosure. Um, if home prices decline 20% from where they were at the end of last year, uh, we're talking about more than 13 million uh, homeowners with negative equity. If they decline more than 30%, which is my number for what I think is going to happen, uh, then we're talking about more than 20 million. Uh, we're talking about 40% of the homeowners in America having negative equity. So this is big stuff. And, um, and what's happened is that the, um, because the, although the, uh, we haven't had that many defaults yet, we had a lot, but not that many, because the prospects of this have become so dire, uh, the, uh, these collateralized debt obligations, which were supposed to be, the, the upper tranches were supposed to be really safe, um, are clearly not really safe. So there is something called ABX, which is actually, it's not exactly, it's, it's the price of insuring against default on these things. But it gives you, it can be read as, as the, uh, what people expect to get on the dollar. So the, the ABX is on tranches that were further down, things that were rated uh, double B. They were still at like 100% at the beginning of, of 2007. Um, they're now typically 18%. So the, the lower rated tranches have basically become worthless. Um, and the AAA tranches have fallen from like 100 to around 70. 
Uh, and um, this is telling you that you know, a lot of people who thought they were buying nice, safe assets turned out they didn't know it, but they were buying junk bonds. And, uh, and <clears throat> all of this stuff is, uh, is out there. Now, um, OK, but so far you could say, well, this is just money lost. And you know, people lose money. And if you try to work it through, uh, even if home prices fall 30%, well, you know, that's, uh, that's six trillion. Homes are you know, about $20 trillion in value. So it's six trillion dollars. And, you know, six trillion here, six trillion there, as soon you're talking about real money. Um, uh, <laughs> relative to the economy, that's still a bit smaller than the, than the stock price bust at the beginning of the decade. So that, it might not seem that severe. But in fact, people who are serious uh, financial types are terrified. Um, and the reason is that a, a lot of this. Um, this debt that has suddenly turned out to be bad is held by uh, key players in the financial system. So you have um, banks, uh, and, and all this stuff, exposure we didn't know they have, is, turning, is coming to light. Banks, uh, non-bank financial intermediaries that do things that banks do but aren't formally called banks, and of course don't have deposit insurance or any of that stuff, um, are taking these losses, and it's huge, and we don't know where it is. So basically every week we get two or three institutions saying, oh, by the way, we've got 10 billion of losses that you didn't even know we were exposed, but there we are. And, uh, and <coughs> so an uh, example of a non-bank thing, that this fund that, the, uh, that Florida uh, schools were using essentially as a bank account, a place to park their money uh, until they needed it to buy textbooks and do building repairs and so on, uh, turned out to have be contaminated with subprime debt. And all of a sudden, the state um, is, had to stop withdrawals from this fund because there, people were starting to get nervous about it and pull out. And so it's as if they had, all these school districts had their money in a bank, and suddenly the bank was closed, had to slam its doors. And so that sort of thing is happening um, throughout the economy. Uh, <coughs> and um, it's really scary because it means that a lot of the lending um, in the economy is grinding to a halt. Uh, some things are still going on. People are still able to borrow on their credit cards. Uh, housing is pretty, has suffered a terrific hit, but the, the rest of the economy is not yet showing clear signs of, of, uh, of being in deep trouble, but people think it's going to be pretty bad because they're, they're, the whole credit mechanism has, uh, has frozen up 